Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Deck Doctor video, and this time it is going to be on the Cyber Dragon Kaiju deck list that was sent in by a subscriber to me a little while ago. Now, if you're interested in some gameplay videos that I've done with this deck, I did three separate videos against three different matchups, against Blue Eyes, against Metal Foes, and against ABC, and each one of those videos is about 10 minutes long, but has five games total of this deck being played. So there's 15 total games worth of a sample size to pull some, you know, information from essentially while the sample size is a bit small it is still sizable enough to start seeing and noticing trends in the way the deck operates and things that are becoming problematic as and other things of that like form and function and nature but if you're interested all the links to those will be in the description down below if you want to go check those out I definitely implore you to do so because it will definitely add a little bit more context as to what is going to be happening in terms of this deck shifting but this video is going up a little bit later than I expected it to, a few days later than I was hoping to have it up, and that's because I've spent quite a lot of time actually thinking this through, because I wanted to sort of change the deck's function to try and make it operate just as well going first as it could going second. The deck has a pretty high power ceiling going second because of the inherent nature of Cyber Dragons having just amazing amounts of ways to generate high attacking creatures and high amounts of damage. That wasn't something I was really too worried about. The biggest issue I have is that going second in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, at least in the current format that we're sitting in, is kind of a suicide mission, and that was something I was trying to hopefully address. And I tried multiple different theorems and multiple different ideas, trying to implement Brilliant Fusion into the list, trying to implement multiple different other like small engines to allow the deck more capacity at going first. A few different things were things that I tried and ultimately were met with less than stellar results and I just kept trying different things and trying to get things to work and just nothing could really help change this deck's focus to where it could actually operate consistently well on a going first basis. That's just the unfortunate fact of the matter. The only thing that I found that was slightly successful was playing things like triple card card D and like quick draw synchrons and then like a lot of traps that like just like stop your opponent from playing for a turn and then draw cards in the form of reckless greeds and stuff so that you could go first try to resolve a card card to get up in cards and then have things like reckless and then traps to not die and then next turn you would do your cyber dragon nonsense but it was still the same sort of spiel that we were you know having with just going second in that you're trying to do a lot more work at it this time so like there was a few different things that I tried and ultimately it all came down to I felt like the deck list the deck can't really adapt as well as I was trying to make it adapt so the conclusion I came to from that point onward was to just try and optimize the deck list as much as I could for going second and going second well and that's ultimately the conclusion that gave me the best sort of results that I was looking for so I decided to run with it a bit more and now here is where we are that's that's all the backstory for that so let's go ahead and start making some changes this is the original list that was sent in to me by the subscriber I'm so sorry I cannot remember your name but the message is buried in the depths of Facebook now so I can't really find it uh, as well as I've set up a new way to send in deck doctor suggestions as well as replays if you have any cool replays that you'd like me to possibly commentate over or if you have a deck list that you'd like to send in for your own potential deck doctor segment or if you just want me to play a deck that you think is cool then definitely send a deck list to the email address that is in the description of this video as well as every other video I've been putting out recently but anyway let's go ahead and start making these changes since I'm sure that intro is every bit of like three minutes long without looking at the timer basically what I needed to do with this deck was optimize the way that it functions going second and that meant cutting a lot of dead weight trimming down on some dead weight as well as introducing a few more cards that help the decks overall capacity at generating combos going second as well as doing so reliably so the first thing that is going to be trimmed down is cyber dragon Zwei. Zwei is the weakest of these options that you have available to you and unfortunately like the only other cyber dragon name that we have that's even remotely decent is Toon Cyber Dragon, but it's not treated as Cyber Dragon because it is Toon Cyber Dragon. If the card said it was treated as Cyber Dragon in Grave and on Field, then it would leaps and bounds be a three of in these deck lists, and is why would like not even be an option because it's definitely the weakest option. You have to reveal a card for it to become a cyber dragon which these cards just do on their own and ultimately it's just another target to make it a nice rounded out like 10 monster count number uh, unfortunately it does have you know usage 
for being, you know, a card that makes Rampage Dragon, but ultimately the fact that you have to reveal spells to make it a Cyber Dragon name and, like, trigger effects, which means that you could have it negated and things like that in certain situations, it's just ultimately best allocated down to one. The card's kind of bricky in nature, and ultimately it's just, it's been doing fine at one. I've never actually played a game where I've had to summon this card. It's always been sent to the graveyard off of Rampage Dragon's effect or to fuse for Rampage Dragon, and I usually send it from deck to graveyard just to be, you know, machines for its double attacking uh, gain and stuff like that, but the Cyber Dragon lineup, having 10 of them seems very nice and solid. Uh, like I said, if Toon Cyber Dragon was a bit better or if we had a better surrogate for Zwei, uh, then that would probably just be in its place and probably a 3 of as well. The, the name issue is not really that big of a factor, though, um, in terms of keeping the names high and keeping the names up. But carrying on, things that are going to be trimmed down further. The Kaiju Engine, while I agree with the amount of Kaijus that are here, well, not really the amount, just the uh, the allocation of them, having three of the Jizurkiryu, um, the searchable one, as well as having at least one Gamma Seal and at least one Thunder King, the Lightning Strike Kaiju, I believe that to be correct. Now, they do conflict with Cyber Dragon Dre. Uh, now, that's the biggest issue that I have with these cards, is that Dre is one of your big combo plays into, you know, Cyber Dragon Nova into Infinity and stuff like that. Uh, and these being summoned conflict with that directly. But that really only means that I want to trim Gamma Seal down to one, just so that we have the extra names. Thunder King has a lot of utility in this deck because you will use Interrupted Kaiju Slumber to summon Jizukiru to your opponent's side of the board and a Thunder King to your own, and then you'll contact away with the Jizukiru because of your Cyber Dragons into a Chimera Attack being at least 2k attack, meaning that's at least 5300 damage on board. Gamma Seal serves the same sort of purpose, although it's more for you are able to summon it to your side of the board, contact away with the Jizukiru you gave your opponent for removal, and then you're able to make something like Titanic Galaxy, which is strong in certain matchups. So I definitely agree with this because of the fact that it's just one of each different name and then three of the one that actually matters because you can search this off repair plan. And because one of the kaijus was trimmed out of the main as far as like extra names go, one copy of Interrupted Kaiju Slumber is also coming out. I definitely think that eight to nine kaiju cards is way too many, but I definitely am a fan of having seven, like seven to six of them. It's definitely something that, like, as a number between 4 to 7 is something that has always worked very well in the competitive history as well as in my own personal experience. And having one of each of the other names that you summon alongside the two uh, Interrupted Kaiju Slumbers just makes sense. Having one additional name for each copy of Kaiju Slumber that you're playing just seems like it makes a good deal of sense, at least. But that's really the only changes that are going to happen to the monster lineup. Like I said, just trimming things down to optimize them is what we're trying to do here. Uh, there's not really a lot else that has to change about this list. It just needs to be optimized. And the next thing that is going to be optimized is the count on Instant Fusion. Instant Fusion is definitely a fantastic combo piece. Being able to allow you to summon Panzer Dragon or Parasycroid to allow you to go into Cyber Dragon Nova into Cyber Dragon Infinity rather easily and rather efficiently is definitely something worth playing at least more than one of. I don't know if I agree with three, and so far I've been playing two in most of my builds, but that's specifically just because I do not want to draw multiples of them, and the usually the ways that I have the ratios worked out is I'll either play two Twin Twister and three Instant Fusion, or I will play two Instant Fusion and three Twin Twister. That extra third card slot usually alternates back and forth between those cards. That is the main thing that usually ends up going about the changing. Let's move that up there just because it fits in the area so everything's kind of laid out a bit better and move this here just so that I can articulate my thoughts a bit better. Now cards like limited removal while I think are gimmicky for this deck I believe work because specifically because of the existence of Rampage Dragon. If Rampage Dragon did not exist limited removal would likely not be in the deck because Rampage Dragon itself just does so so much in terms of damage its damage output by itself is 6,300 if it hits directly three times. And with cards like Power Bond, that gets doubled. And then cards with Limiter Removal, that gets doubled again. Now, Limiter Removal is arguably a little bit, you know, more well-versed for the job because it allows you to actually economically summon Rampage Dragon off of something like Overload Fusion. But even summoning it through Power Bond is pretty economical because you can take the same number of cards away from your opponent that you used as fusion materials because of its spell and trap card destruction effect. This card is a fantastic card for Cyber Dragons, and 
The fact that it was released makes the deck actually really scary because the deck just puts out tons of damage, which I've already touched on earlier. But for the main deck, the things that are going to be changed is there are an extreme lack of cards that give you extra combo pieces in this deck. And that is definitely something that you want, that you, I dare say, desire. Now, Pot of Desires is definitely a card that I agree with playing in this deck because when you are going second, you start at six cards. If you open a Desires, congratulations, you've now started at seven cards. Your opponent started at five, you started at seven. That's basic math, that's basic numbers, that's basic advantage. Now, while you can banish some of your key cards, there's nothing really too key here other than, like, if you banish both of your alternate kaiju names, but that's not really something that you really need to be worrying about. You could banish Zwei, oh no, not the extra Cyber Dragon name that we only run just to be an extra name because there's no good other names, like, oh dear, oh my. But in a 40-card deck, I definitely agree with Double Desires. I think three is way too much, and uh, Double Desires just seems like it is the probably optimal way to go with trying to gain extra cards. That's the thing. You want to get extra cards in multiple ways, and this is just one of those ways to do so. It gives you extra cards to fuel like like bigger and better power bond plays, bigger like overload fusion plays, bigger kaiju plays, bigger cyber dragon exceeds plays. Like there's so many different things that this card actually allows you to do just because you have that extra card. That was something I was noticing a lot in my testing of all of the lists was that Pot of Desires not being there you actually struggle pretty hard in some game states to do the maximum amount possible with six cards. And sometimes it's literally just one card off, and Pot of Desires is just another thing that can help you get there. Now, that being said, if this is a card that is like, if you're trying to play this deck IRL and you can't afford this card, if it's not in your price range, then I can definitely like see it justifiably not being run. Now, if you have friends that have them, I would definitely try to borrow them if you were trying to play this for any like major event. But otherwise, like, I can understand why you wouldn't run this card. I can understand. If it's if it's a price thing, I can understand. But price should literally be the only reason that you aren't running this card at this point. It's pretty established in the competitive metagame as being a very, very good asset, being able to, you know, give you extra combo pieces. The banishment effect is hardly ever a huge factor to, uh, to your game plan. Now... Carrying on, the last spot in the main deck. Now, this being said, let me just go back to this Pot of Desires point here. If you aren't playing these cards, I would probably be playing Max C's in the main, just because this deck does naturally like to go second, and Max C's paired with Kaijus just seems like a you know a match made in heaven, as well as the fact that it can also be a card that potentially gives you more cards. The problem with Max C being that it is a lot more matchup dependent, as well as the fact that you could easily just cut other cards for Max C and run Max C with Pot of Desires. That is definitely something that you could also do. You could take out the Upstart Goblin and the third Twin Twister and put a pair of Max C's in. You could do a lot of things like that and just end up with a similar yet just as good result. Uh, but that is neither here nor there. Now, the last card in the deck I'm back and forth on. I kind of want it to be a third Power Bond. Specifically because of the double desires, you want to draw into Power Bond. It is definitely your bomb. Power Bond is your bomb card. Like, it's the card that you play that you say you throw everything into, like, your plays that you can make stick. You bait out every card you think is possibly there. And then you Power Bond for a Rampage Dragon. Pop two spells and traps if they're there. If they're Pendulum Scales, you pop those and it's just free. And then you send two monsters to grave, and you have a 4200 attacking Chimeratic Rampage Dragon that can attack three times, and that's absolutely game breaking. Now, your options here are to play the third Power Bond, which I really, really like the uh, the implications of because of the fact you're just going to see the card more often. It's definitely a card that's alive a lot more of the time than something like Machine Duplication would be. I definitely thought about upping Machine Duplication to 3 for a while, and I did test it at 3, but the problem is, is that it only works with Core, and Core, by nature, is not really that accessible in the deck, even though you do run technically 6 copies of it. The theory is like you really want to see Core before you see this card, because Core makes this card live, and that's that's sort of all the little nuances there. But the third Power Bond could be the 40th card in here, or a card that I actually have been really, really liking the idea of as a one-of is Cybernetic Fusion Support. Now, this card is a card that actually has been released to us for some time, but it was released to us in a really offhanded way, and it was something that, you know, it's something that's a searchable one-of in this deck off of Core. Again, that's another card like Machine Dupe that requires you to essentially have access to Core, but 
it still just seems like it might be worth as a one of in place of the third power bond or the third twin twister but I'm not putting it in the list specifically because I'm trying to optimize this deck but this is just an option for you cybernetic fusion support is a searchable quick play that you can search off of like cyber dragon core because cyber dragon core searches cybernetic spells and traps and its effect is pay half your life points and then once during this turn if you would fusion summon a machine type fusion monster you can banish the fusion materials from your hand field or graveyard and so what this does is this turns power bond essentially into your overload fusions so it's a searchable card that allows you to have it combined with power bond and you could play power bond and banish your cards from graveyard and essentially have a better overload fusion now the reason it is not in the list is because I find it to be a bit too gimmicky um, and like I said I'm trying to optimize this list I'm not trying to implement strange new techie two card combos that aren't really tried true and tested that's not what I'm trying to do at all I'm trying to make this deck as good as it can possibly be and the thing is, is that this deck could easily go to above 40 cards at this point if you wanted to you could play 44 cards in this if you were going to do so though it would be like add two maxis and two veilers to the main deck so you have better chances going second and maybe cutting the upstart and replacing it for a third desires because once you go over 40 cards the third desires becomes a lot more valuable because you want to see it and you have a bigger deck that you're banishing from so you have less chances of drawing multiple desires as well as you have less chances of banishing key card like cards and combo pieces there's that as well as another idea but this is the main deck that I came to and had the most success with testing wise was this 40 cards here now for the extra deck the extra deck is going to get some very minor changes and they are mainly in the form of cutting down the fat now the fat being cards like chimera Tra um, chimera tech over dragon this card there's almost no instance where you're gonna make this card over something like rampage dragon because if you're if you have the deck functioning on all cylinders then you're able to out things with kaijus you're able to out things with cyber dragon nova being big like there's so you're able to suck things up with infinity there's so many other ways for you to out monsters that relying on overload fusion to make chimera tech over dragon just seems like a very very wasted extra deck slot now for the two instant fusions these are staying the same because panzer dragon is the only true instant fusion target even though parasycroid is an instant fusion target as well but parasycroid can be summoned with power bond and can attack directly for game shots and that is actually something that is pretty pretty relevant but carrying on the space that is also going to be made is that one chimera tech fortress dragon is going to be taken out of the extra deck i've never seen myself making three of this card because the games usually end too quickly you either win fast or you lose fast like the most that i've ever made in a turn of this card is making two of them and even that's pretty rare and so it just seems like it's better suited as a different extra deck spot to me in all honesty but the cards that are going to be added in place of them is constellar pleiades this card is a very very good card to have alongside your cyber dragon infinity because of the fact that it allows you to do things like bounce your kaijus as well um, now you do have the option of chimera teching away with your kaijus yes but if you also have the ability to make a Pleiades, then you can actually turn one Kaiju into outing two monsters and then contacting with it. That's actually something that's very valid and a very strong play, is to Kaiju one of your opponent's monsters with Jizukiru, make Pleiades, bounce your Kaiju to your hand, put it over your opponent's monster, and then if you have like a core or another Cyber Dragon just chilling on the board, then you're able to contact away with it then and essentially out two monsters for the price of one card and you still have yielded yourself a fortress dragon that is the same stats that it would have been if you had just foregone that play entirely it's just better card economy wise and that's why it is in here and then the last card that is going to be fit into the extra deck is essentially just something that's kind of a bit win more but it's definitely something that has come up a few times and that is basically every time it comes up is when you have to do like a Vol when you're doing a Volcasaurus play which definitely comes up a lot more with the addition of the extra instant fusion with the extra fusion spell in the deck because Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon is a level 5 um, so like there is that as well and that is Gaia Dragon being able to put Gaia Dragon over Volcasaurus after you pop a card is actually just a really huge thing and the only other thing that it could possibly be that I've been back and forth on this slot for as well is to make the Gaia Dragon rather a Constellar Ptolemy, M7. That's that's the slot that's back and forth for me, is Gaia Dragon or M7. 
Now, the reason M7 would be in here is because you can make Pleiades, then you can put M7 on top of it, and M7 would start adding back your Kaijus for the same reason that Pleiades is played. Like, you would make Pleiades, you'd bounce a Kaiju, you'd Kaiju another monster, then you'd contact with it, whatever, then you'd put M7 on top of Pleiades. It is, again, another very win more card, but is definitely a lot more suited towards play because it is a variable situation, it, it adds an additional variable to your game states, which is definitely expanding on your game state, which is something that you want. And it definitely adds a lot more variables and a lot more potential play lines than just having a third Fortress Dragon or having a Chimera Tech Over Dragon in. Because it's an extra deck card that does not rely on you drawing a non-searchable fusion card in the form of making it you know, playable or good. So... This is ultimately the list that I came to. Just a little bit of optimization here and there. Like I said, I talked about a few changes that you can make to this list itself as well. Like I said, you can make it 44 cards, replace the upstart with the third desires, and play two max C, two Valor in the main to make it better for going second. Or hell, you could put the two copies of Zwei back in just to increase the Cyber Dragon names for it to be a larger deck, but just have more resource pool to pull, like, pull from. I talked about cybernetic fusion support there's a few different things i discussed in this video but ultimately this is the optimized list that i felt like was uh was good enough to uh to start testing and i've had a few good better results than i've had with the original list just because of how it's optimized and you see power bond more often you get more cards because of pot of desires things like that just just little changes that make large impacts that's honestly what i was looking for with this deck because there's not really a way to change its core function because of the restraints that the archetype has around it. It's very, very hard to play this deck as a going first deck. It's actually probably almost impossible. But, I mean, making it go second, we can only try to make it do as best as it can. And I feel like this is definitely a step in the right direction. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you like this video, definitely be sure to like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. It helps everything just, you know, do better. It helps out a ton. And like I said, it helps the channel and the community within it grow and helps things get better as time goes on. But other than that, check out the links on the screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might also like. There's a thousand of them over there. So a lot of gameplay videos, a lot of deck profiles, a lot of theory videos, a lot of discussion videos. There's probably something that you'll find to your liking there. But as I already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. As usual, guys, take care, and like I've already said in the past, if you have a deck doctor you'd like to potentially suggest, leave it in the description down below. Or not, don't leave it in the description. You don't have access to that. What am I saying? There is a link to an email address in the description down below. Send the deck list to that email address, and we will possibly see what I can do with it if it catches my fancy. But other than that, as I've already said, take care, guys. See you in the next video.